Alright, hey class. Uh, this is Scott Munker. Uh, I told you guys I was going to do some lecture videos. Uh, so here's the first part of that. I'm going to try to keep these to be 10 to 15 minutes in length. Uh, that way you can easily watch one and not, you know, have to pause midway for something. Uh, there will be several of these because uh, these are the same lectures I give in my classes during the week. Uh, and there's roughly about a week's worth. Uh, which is roughly two hours, give or take, although I do ask questions and do some other stuff, so it'd probably be a little less than that. Uh, so I'll go ahead and start. And if any of you guys have any questions or problems later, feel free to ask away. All right, computer concepts. Welcome. Now, normally I don't use PowerPoints. Uh, I'm not a big fan of them because I think they're really overused. Uh, if they are used well, you, they can actually be very useful and informative. So hopefully I've done a decent job here. Uh, given our format, this is really the only way to approach this. So off to this first slide. What are computers? Well, I asked this question in my class, and the obvious answer I usually get are, well, this right here is a computer. Uh, and you would be correct. That is a computer, a desktop, a laptop. Uh, those are most certainly computers, but computers are actually vastly more than that. You have a digital watch? Well, guess what? It's got a computer in it. It's got to do a myriad of functions, keep track of different things that you want. Stopwatch, you know, multiple times, dates, and things like that. Got a cell phone? That is a really powerful computer that you hold in your hand. In fact, I mean, this one little device can do the same thing multiple 10, 15, 20 devices can do back years ago. Uh, this thing's vastly more powerful than my first computer. Uh, and it's that first computer is probably, you know, 20 or 30 times the size. And of course, game systems and stuff like that are computers. Uh, they're specifically designed for games, but they are computers nonetheless. Even your car has a computer in it. Uh, to keep track of various things like, you know, you know, gas going here, there, temperatures, and various other things. Uh, and it can malfunction just as anything else does. And the more advanced our cars and automobiles and vehicles and stuff get, the more it's going to rely on computers and software and stuff to do various things. Uh, newer computers can actually be hacked, and people can take control and screw them over uh, because computers have become kind of an integral part of the new automobiles. Now, computers can do a variety of things. Uh, to be a computer, you have to basically follow this little list of tasks. Uh, very first thing, you have to give it input. Command, you know, information, something along the lines of that. And once you've given it that information, it'll process it and do whatever it is you want it to do to it. It will change it or, you know, go find a file and open it up for you or do whatever it is you ask. After it does that, or even during or before, it's going to have to put it in memory. Uh, memory is the place that pretty much holds it while it's being used. Uh, after that, or shortly before, or well, typically after, uh, it's got to store it somewhere. You don't necessarily have to store things. But imagine writing a 10-page paper and never being able to save it. That would kind of be a little frightening, right? Having to write 10 whole pages and then if the power gets cut or something like that, you couldn't open it back up again or something screws up. Uh, so typically we won't want to be able to store our information. And then of course we want to output it. Output it so we can see it, you know, touch it, feel it, whatever. Now, we'll talk about the thing that does the processing first, uh, then we'll go to the various little devices and things. The CPU, Central Processing Unit. This has two parts, the ALU, Arithmetic Logic Unit, which does math, basically. Uh, the Control Unit, which controls where data goes here, there. Uh, this is your computer's brain. Effectively, it does all the computations, it decides, you know, you ask it to do something, it does all the math that allows that thing to be done. Then it sends 
the information and data wherever it needs to go, whether it's your screen or to the RAM or uh, some other part or across the internet. Without this, your computer would be utterly useless. Imagine trying to talk to somebody who had no brain. They just sit there and do nothing, right? Same with the computer. Now, devices used by computers. Uh, we'll go through some of them. Input devices, output devices, memory, storage devices, and communication devices. Uh, so at this portion, we're going to go through all the hardware. Ta-da! Hardware. This is probably the highest spec potato you're ever going to see, by the way. So, let's continue. Input devices. This is anything that can basically give a computer a command or allow you to interact with it. Uh, the obvious first input device would be a mouse. Trackpad, trackball, touch screens on your phone. They're all the same thing. Uh, they allow you to grab something or touch something and tell it, you know, what you want it to do. I'm going to point the click, point the mouse here, click on this thing, and it's going to run that file. I'm going to put my finger on the screen, on the file I won't run, and it's going to run it. Same type of thing. Uh, so typically your mouse. Well, maybe not that mouse. Something more along the lines of this, probably. Now, your next one is a keyboard. Did you know you could actually unplug your mouse and still use your computer? Uh, without really any problems. I mean, most things are designed for mice, but you actually don't absolutely have to have one. Uh, so a keyboard allows you to type in words, commands, and various other things. This is actually one of the first input devices for computers. Uh, it allowed you to basically tell it to do whatever you wanted. In fact, everything you had to do initially was just typing commands. Now you get to move a little cursor and click on pictures, which is vastly different and a lot easier. Of course, a keyboard. Well, now this is a musical keyboard, not probably not the keyboard you're thinking about, but still this could technically be considered an input device. I could hook a keyboard up like this up to a computer and with the right software play a song and it can record it. It can take the information that I'm typing, or in this case keying in, and save it so I could listen to it later. Guitars and various other instruments could be hooked up too so you could record it. Now usually you're probably thinking about this kind of keyboard, which would be the kind of keyboard we're talking about normally. It allows you to type in whatever messages or information you want. Now, a microphone would be another. This allows you to record your voice. Much the way I'm talking to you right now, I'm recording my voice using my, actually my webcam microphone. Now, I just mentioned webcam, so obviously a webcam or a camera the microphone records your voice and allows it to take your voice outside the computer and digitally store it inside. A camera can take pictures, video, and audio and do basically the same thing. I can record that information, store it inside the computer for later use. Now occasionally people will, the most common answer I usually get in class is, you know, when I ask, what's another input device? Flash drive. Well, a flash drive does not take any information from outside the computer and put it in. It doesn't take any commands. It stores files. Uh, so it's a storage device, which we're going to get to a bit later. Now, a scanner. This is something that allows you to take a picture, a document, something like that, and scan it, the physical thing, and create a digital representation inside the computer. So basically, you put your picture in, you press a button, and bam, you have an image displayed inside your computer that you can save and do whatever you want to with. You could also, you know, scan in documents, your face, if you wanted to shove your face on there for whatever reason. Uh, this just allows you to take images, pictures, documents, and take them from outside, a hard copy, and make a digital copy of it. Now, output devices. An input device allows you to give information to a computer. An output device would allow you to take information out of a computer. Uh, the most common one that you would normally think of is probably what you're looking at right now, your computer screen, your monitor. This allows you to see what's going on inside that computer. I move the mouse, you see the cursor move. I click on a video, you'll see the video playing. Uh, I tell it what to do and it doesn't. I can actually see what's happening. 
Now you can actually unplug your monitor and your computer will still work fine. You can still use the mouse. You can click on things and tell it to do stuff. But if you can't see it, it's going to be kind of hard to actually do anything, right? If you're in a dark room and you can't see anything, you can still walk around. You're going to run into stuff. Uh, you just won't be able to do it very effectively. Uh, same is true with the monitor. Now, the monitor would display the visual, but a speaker would display your sound, uh, much the way you're listening to me now. Or uh, if you wanted to listen to some music or anything like that, uh, a speaker lets you output sound. So there is sound digitally stored in the computer, and the computer interprets that and throws it out to the speaker so you can hear it. And if we have a scanner that scans things in, real things, and makes them digital, uh, we have a printer, which is basically the other side of that coin. Uh, we can take a digital picture or document and print it on a piece of paper or photo paper or something like that and have a physical thing in the real world I can touch or throw at somebody. Now, usually a flatbed scanner, a printer, uh, they're actually bundled together. Uh, you'll find them actually sold as one thing. Uh, that's because they're pretty much two sides of the same coin. Uh, one handles inputting information, the other handles outputting information. Now, the question, why does a computer seem to slow down after a few years? We'll get to that in the next video. Actually, because